Aloha, good morning. This is Crombie Dace of Crombie Realty, and I'm so excited. I have Jill Notman Colpitz here and in on site in Whistler <laughs> Village. I'm so excited. Yeah. Aloha. Well, welcome. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, thank you. And I just, um, I'm so excited to be back. And we were just talking, I said to Jill, you have my dream job. I've always, I, I have a love of skiing. And I thought, years ago, I always thought, I always want to sell in the ski town. And, you know, as I sit here and talk about the pretty property and, you know, living and working in a ski town. And I asked you, what do you love about it? And maybe you want to share that. Yeah, what I love about it is I just love that the, the buyers here, you can have, um, you know, the more regular experience of working with locals and, mm -hmm. and first time buyers and all of that. But then you get to work with all the people from around the world that come here, which is really fun. And I mean, on top of that, as they buy their places, they're here with their families and we, you know, are such a small community, especially when my kids were little. And then their kids and my kids are going to summer tennis camp together or going to ski school together or things like that. Oh, it's, wonderful. Yeah, it's really, really Fair, nice. Yeah, it's so nice when, you know, families grow and different families from all over the world. And when we talk about international buyers, where, where are most of your international buyers coming from? From the United States. From the United yeah. States. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. interesting. People think we have a lot more international buyers, but mm. actually 87% of our buyers are from Canada. Oh, interesting. And almost all of that is BC. Okay. And then a few percent from scattered through the rest of the provinces. Very it's interesting. Yeah, it's surprising. I think the highest point uh, when our dollar, our Canadian dollar is at the lowest, it was probably, we were about 19% um, non-resident buyers. 19% yeah. non-resident. And what is it now then? And it's 13 now. 13%. Which 8% of that is U.S. buyers. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and the and second you, group be do you The think? second group would be mm, really sort of um, Philippines, oh, uh, okay. Japan, Australia, I'm trying yeah. to think, you know. This, but it only yeah. takes, because it's a small percentage, it only takes one or two sales. Correct. Uh, the UK was very strong for us at one point. It's a little slower to come back right now. Okay. But I suspect it'll be be back at some point. Well, I think the US would be rather strong, only because of the exchange rate right now. Well, right, because yeah. you get uh, another 35 cents for every dollar. <laughs> I know. And talking about that, that's like buying property on sale. So <laughs> why don't we talk about what we can buy in Whistler? Yeah. So you, give me an example of what, you know, from a lower end, middle range, yeah. and higher end, what people are looking at right now. Well, so a, a big part of our market is the part is the part where the properties can be rented nightly, short-term rental. Okay. So we have those Canadian buyers, uh, Vancouver predominantly, um, or our American clients, and yeah. they're buying things so that when they're not here, they can rent them out. And you know, of course, Airbnb is such a huge thing right now, and and VRBO and all of the self management uh, tools. So people um, love something that is zoned for that. So the village and the benchlands, as we call it, up around Blackcomb, those mm -hmm. are all zoned for nightly rental. Great. Okay. And so that is a very strong area of the market for us. And then as you move outside of the village, mm -hmm. we have all the residential neighborhoods. There are a few that also have nightly rental. Like yeah. We have a golf course up north on the highway that can have nightly rental. And then down in Creekside Village, which is our second village, our original village. Oh, right. And okay. um, so there's nightly rental zoning there, but also it's a mixed neighborhood. So the people that just want to buy cabins, um, you can buy a nearly tear down for a million five to million six yes and then beyond that you have everything up to the multi-million dollar homes need and and then you know we talk about the vrbo and i know in the U u.s it's such a strict market now mm -hmm. you know a lot of that's going out of well we are yeah. seeing the same thing here in bc yeah. and they are cracking down yeah. on a number of big of neighborhoods and and cities and towns um the smaller towns, not so much because it, it's not affecting uh, the pool of residential properties available mm -hmm. to full-time people. But in Vancouver, it's a big thing. Yes. And uh, 
right, we're very lucky because we have the zoning on the property that actually allows it to be rented nightly. So those customers can buy them here and then they're not um, having the concerns that Airbnb won't be allowed. So, you know, just a question I have, it seems like the government in the US and maybe Canada, they're just changing the rules right now. Constantly. Yeah. <laughs> to the point where I know. It's, it's very hard to go, yeah. have I thought of every tax, have I thought of every ban, every, every you know, rule that's new and, and going to affect my buyers and my it, owners. It sounds like in the Whistle Village, Black Climate, like you said, right there up against the mountain, there's no way they could change that nightly rate to something different. Or Well, I, I highly doubt it because yeah. Whistler's been really focused ever since the early 80s when the village was built yes on creating warm beds which is making sure that there are beds for this world-class resort so the um the properties that we have in those areas not only are they hotel style but they're townhome as well and they are zoned for nightly rental um which is where predominantly our non-resident buyer is looking mm -hmm. and uh just recently, the Canadian government has introduced a foreign buyer ban um, early last year, and uh, that was for two years, and now they've just extended it for two more years. But Whistler is fully exempt from that because we are a resort municipality. Got so it. we are focused on resort and focused for that tourism trade. I mean, it's terrible to say, but do you see that helping the market that foreigners can buy here versus Vancouver? Well, we hope so. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and, you know, even during COVID, we had our foreign buyers who couldn't get here still buying here. Well, it's like COVID anywhere. We were, um, had people buying, you know, sight unseen and they wanted their second homes or to relocate and work from, you know, and we have lots of people working from home here. And their second homes, well, either new ones or ones they just bought. Obviously the foreign buyers couldn't come yet, but uh, they came as soon as the borders opened. <laughs> Very fabulous. And then um, you mentioned there's, there might, might be one more tax for foreign buying. Yes, um, the foreign buyers in the rest of BC or most of BC, have a foreign buyer's tax of 20% on top of the uh, other closing nice. cost. And we are exempt from that as well. Oh, so Whistler is yes. exempt from the 20% price? So we are exempt wow. from the, the foreign buying ban and yeah. the foreign buy, buyer's tax. That's which, amazing. Which we feel very fortunate. Uh, but you, when you look at our town, you know why. <coughs> yes. Yeah. No. yes. So I thought it'd be fun to, ex um, you know, what the processes or the experience someone has, you know, they come skiing here with their family, and I know a lot of families in Hawaii that come here, and they say, well, maybe we should look at buying a place. So, like, if I introduce you to one of my clients, tell me, what, how would that whole um, process go? Well, just what you just said, some of them have been coming here already, and yeah. they love it, and they're like, okay, this is crazy, we've been coming for years, we love it, we're coming back, we should look at buying. Or sometimes it's their first trip and they fall in love. And yeah. then they, they're like, yeah, no, we love it, we want to buy. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of fun at that stage. Um, you know, obviously the, the part where you're going out and looking at properties and all of that is quite fun. But yeah. the important thing is understanding um, just any additional costs or rules around yes. non-resident and yeah. literally until a few years ago there really weren't any um, but uh, and again for Whistler we're lucky because we don't have the same uh, taxes and bans uh, we're exempt from these um, yeah, well, just, um, it's amazing that you can buy in Whistler and you don't have these taxes. It's wonderful, yeah. and and uh, yeah. but then so you know I make sure that that they know what the costs are going to be, you know what the rules are around the properties that they are looking at because yeah. there are some where you own the property completely, but you actually only can book it for your personal use twenty eight days in the winter half of the year and twenty eight days in the summer half. And those are properties such as the Westin Hotel and the Four Seasons and the Pan Pacific. We call them restricted condo hotels. Yes. And so uh, it's just important to understand. But when you're not there, those 
hotels are putting guests in your room and they are earning you revenue. And so that is, uh, you know, why people keep coming back to those properties and the returns are fairly strong. Um, now that's great, the returns are really strong. And what about when someone goes to sell their property here? When they go to sell, the only uh, thing that is different for them to a Canadian is that the government wants their capital gains tax before your money have, goes across that. the border. Yes. So at the time that you have an accepted offer, yep. an unconditional accepted offer, then the paperwork goes off to Ottawa, uh, to the tax authority, and then they take a little bit of time and they get it back to the lawyers and say, this is how much capital gains is owed, take it from the proceeds of sale, and then the rest of the proceeds can go to the owners. Now, luckily, they only usually hold back 30 to 50% of the proceeds. Uh, so as soon as the property closes, you do get a minimum of 50% of the proceeds. Got it. And then, you know, just an appreciation. You know, we have an average of appreciation, I think, over 30 years in Hawaii. Oh, the same 5%. I mean, do you use a general rule of thumb? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for 38 years, and my first test was... Seventy three thousand yeah. dollars, and uh, that house now would probably go for a um, million nine, two million dollars. Yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah. um, it's always yeah. great to buy. <laughs> I know people, Long term hold, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and then, what about can a foreigner get mortgages in um, Canada? Yes, they yeah. can. Uh, typically, that the ratio of mortgage will not be um, the same as a Canadian, so they will want a little more down payment, okay. a little more security against right. the property. You're looking yeah. at about thirty-five to forty percent down, depending on the type of property, depending yeah. on whether it's revenue producing, depending on the strength of the buyer. Got it. Well, thank you for your time today. Yeah, this welcome. has been so fantastic. This is probably about my seventh visit to Whistler. I absolutely love oh, it. Great. I was just saying to Doug, it feels like a second home. And, and you know, my dear friend, your cousin Nina, um, you know, she's introduced me to half a dozen people I have to ski with in the next few <laughs> days. So she's got me busy. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. so looking forward well, to it. Well, the sun is coming out this weekend, I believe. Oh, so it is, yes. right? Yes, great. Right. Enjoy, enjoy the view. Thank you. And then we'll put a, a link um, to this video. So you feel free to um, call or text or email Jill and she'd be happy to help you with questions. Happy to. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks.